We've spoken every week on this show this year about the intersection of race and college athletics. We've covered a lot of topics. We covered black quarterbacks, black head coaches, social justice issues. We talked about involvement in the political process. This week, we want to focus on the experience of the African-American student athlete, particularly football players in our case, and what it is like on a typical college campus. So let's take a look at the demographics of football players at the Division I level. This isn't specifically the Big Ten, but certainly fairly reflective of the Big Ten. You can see nearly half of Division I football players are black, 48.6%. Okay, so how does this compare to the percentage of African-American students on campus in the Big Ten? You see the numbers. This was as of the fall of last year. Big Ten campuses more than 61% white, just over 5%. African American. So black students make up 1 20th of the campus population on average at Big Ten schools, meaning essentially football players 10 times more likely, guys, to be black than the other students in the population are. Pretty interesting demographics. I don't think it, it probably surprises anyone, although it's stark to see the numbers like this. Joshua, I want to start with you. You are the most recent person among the group of the three of you who played to go through this, give us a sense for what that is like, for being this overwhelming minority A, but also being someone who a lot of people would look at you and say, clearly a football player. Yeah, I mean, it's really interesting. Player. And, you know, you pulled up the demographics and I kind of looked over some of the numbers myself. And you look at like the, the three big cities in Ohio, Cleveland, Columbus, Cincinnati, they're all about 50 to 60% black enrollment and then you look at the Ohio State University and it's only 6% black enrollment, really about 70% white students. The suburban school districts like the one that I came from are about you know, 70, 80% white students. So if you're a black student coming from an environment where you're around a lot of people that look like you, you step onto a college campus, uh, specifically in the Big Ten footprint, automatically there are a lot of people that don't look like you and it's very uncomfortable. If you're a white student, there's a very good chance that your high school looks the same way that your college campus does. And it's, it's really unique as you step on there and you kind of try to assimilate to that experience. For me, one of the things that I always tried to do was not look like a student athlete when I was on campus. And the guys will talk about this, but they treat you a little bit different as a student athlete and you kind of get a little bit of a bonus. But that's not who I am. That's not my full identity. I'm, you know, Joshua Perry, the, the student first, the athlete second. And so I like to go in there and I wear a quarter zip with a polo underneath and some jeans and, uh, you know, shine up my shoes and go to class. And it was just to kind of depart from that and really see what the campus culture was like. I know a lot of guys come from places other than where I came from, grew up here in the Midwest, like I said, in a suburban community, racially homogenous, mostly white. I know a lot of guys are coming from the South, places like Mississippi, which has the highest percentage of black people as a percent of the population, uh, Florida, Georgia, other places where it's very, very different. So I know there can be a culture shock just coming from the South, for example, up to the Midwest, but there's also that big shock too of going from communities where everybody looks like you to now a place where it's really, really hard to find a black face. Um, it's, it's very difficult, and I know that's a big part of the recruiting process is how players are going to transition from their communities at home to the campus community and find some of those cultural centers that will make them feel more comfortable. Yeah, Joshua, I think you're absolutely right. Me growing up here in Chicago, probably one of the most seg segregated cities in all of America, growing up on the south side, I never came downtown. I never went north. I never went out west. I stayed on the south side. That's where I was, and that's where we were comfortable. We really didn't get outside of that. So when I made that transition to the University of Illinois, there the number of black students was probably closer to 2.5 percent. So it was really strange once I got there and talking about being in an environment where I'm looking around and I go into a, a lecture hall and there's really not anyone that looks like me other than some other football players, some other men's or women's basketball players that may have been in those classes. So it was very difficult, but what it did do, it brought those students and even the non-student athletes, they brought us much closer together. We didn't have cell phones at the time, so what we would always do was meet in front of Lincoln Hall, which was one of the, which was one of the, uh, uh, buildings there and out front there was a little heater it was a big heater but we called it the row and if you wanted to catch up with somebody 
you went to the row because you knew at some point, either before that class or after that class, they would go passing by. After my Southern Illinois game, we had a bye week and we were going to play um, Ohio State that following week. So there were a lot of national media that came in and wanted to follow me around because of the touchdown game. And they said, well, where do you want to do the interview? Because I want to go somewhere where you feel comfortable. Well, guess where we went? We went to the row. And if you had looked at the University of Illinois through the lens that particular day that those interviews were being conducted, you would have thought the population of African-Americans on that campus was much greater than it actually was. But I hung around with people who were like me and made me feel comfortable. And that was other student athletes and other students that we just got close to. So what's the responsibility of the coach that brings an African-American player into this mostly white environment, especially a white coach? I think that's changed. I think since the white coaches and the black players and the black coaches and the white players all marched together th this past summer, what, what has happened is we have acknowledged that this is a problem. And so we are problem solvers as coaches. And I would suggest to you a couple things. How do we make the African-American football player, in, in my case, more comfortable on predominantly white campuses? Someone, Joshua, you or Howard, or both of you mentioned recruiting. I, I would engage the parents of the present black members of the team. And I would ask them to inter interact with the recruit, the parents of the recruits that are black, and 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 have a heart to heart, the challenges, the pluses, the minuses. Everybody has a leadership council, right? You can't hear a coach nowadays. How practice go? Well, I'm going to check with the leadership council. Okay. Well, what about a council about race? What about a a council that helps a freshman? get used to campus or, or indoctrinated in campus or gets the advice of, of, of the older black players. You know, coaching isn't treating everybody the same. Coaching is treating everyone fairly. We have recognized, both black and white people have recognized this is an issue. It's up to a coach to solve the problem. You, you, you know, in the old days, you couldn't say, well, you can't treat that group different than this group. Well, yes, you can. That group has different problems than this group, and we're going to treat their problems and their problems and everybody's problems. Hey, Coach, so Coach I please on, tell the story about when you were at Colorado, because I don't think you get enough credit for this. You've been ahead of the game when it comes to, to race relations and black and white players and what you did and what Coach McCartney did to, to integrate those players from Houston and those players from California into Boulder. Yeah, we, we, we give, to answer your question, there's a... Dr. Will Miles in, in Denver, Colorado, and we were having a lot of race issues on our team because night, Bold was 99% white, and the joke in town, it wasn't funny, was if you saw a black man, ask him how he played. That, that's true, but it, it's not funny, and we were trying to deal with it. A bunch of white coaches trying to deal with this issue, and Dr. Will Miles, who happens to be black, said, you all have it way wrong. And, and Bill McCartney, to his credit, brought this outside person in and basically, this is back in 1985, 86, and we went through pretty much what Iowa went through this past summer. You know, words matter, sensitivity matters. You know, it's not funny to say something that you might think's funny. Uh, we're bringing these people from the inner cities to White Boulder. How do we deal with it? And he educated us. When I went to Vanderbilt as the head coach, I asked Dr. Miles to come with me. And ever since those days, I've looked at it, and I, and I appreciate you saying this, Howard, because I really do think I've been fortunate enough to be around coaching staffs that have been ahead of the curve when it comes to race. And I say this all the time, recruiting has changed my life because I've seen the world through the dining rooms and the kitchens of America, Los Angeles to New York, Gulf of Mexico to the Canadian border. And I see, I have seen race like not many Americans have seen. Jerry, I want to follow up on something that you brought up talking about the, the current parents of players talking to the parents of recruits. My parents went through that process when I was a player at Ohio State. They would be brought in all the time to talk to different recruits' parents. It was because we were local and, you know, coach trusted my mom and dad. But a lot of the parents from the South and from other areas out West even would ask a question about the campus culture at a predominantly white school in the Midwest. What was it going to be like? Things as simple as where is my son going to go and get a fresh lineup and a good haircut? You know, what is my son going to eat on Thanksgiving? They're traditional staples from the South, from black communities black families that you eat on Thanksgiving, you don't know if your son's going to get a meal that he's accustomed to. We used to have Von Bell over, he's a great safety for us, 
And uh, my mom would make him catfish on Thanksgiving because that's what he would traditionally eat at home. And we wanted him to feel comfortable coming from the South to the Midwest and being here. Knew he couldn't get it anywhere else in the city that it was gonna taste the same way that it tasted at home. So that was something my parents wanted to do for him. But it's really, really important that those relationships are built. Yeah, I, I think the progress is that we've all acknowledged that this is an issue. And that has not been historically true. When I'm a white coach marching next to a black player for social justice, I can't forget that. That can't be, I did that on Saturday and then my life moves on on Sunday. And I think, guys, this is what gives us, I think, all hope that things can get better. Howard, let's give you the last word on this. Yeah, I, I think that, that we have come a long way on some of these college campuses, that there's still a, a long, long way to go. And, and I think one of the things that's going to continue to help promote change is that we're finally getting an opportunity to listen to the student athletes' voices because they are strong and they are powerful. And we need to continue to listen so we can continue to get better. Well said. Again, we could spend the entire two hours on each of these topics each week, but, but really glad that we got to this one today.